Good afternoon, Gordon. Come in. Come in. It's lovely to see you. How nice to be here. Oh, and entering in through the Great West door. And you know, maybe... Not many people are And maybe in some ways that picks up a theme today. Because often it would only be the royal family or bride of the wedding day. So we are neither, but we've got the privilege of coming in. So Gordon, welcome. I'm looking forward to having a look round with you today. Well, thank you, Mark. I too. And this is a good place to begin because in a way, we're at the very beginning of the church at its door. And this is where we have this wonderful window of the creation above the door, which hopefully we'll be able to talk a little bit about. And you need to walk back a, a wee bit in order to see it. Well, one, one reason why this is a good place to start our way around is because the person who really founded the modern see of Glasgow was Bishop Jocelyn in the later part of the 12th century with King William the Lion. And these two were more or less contemporaries with one another. And attention is drawn to that because in the bottom right hand of the rightmost window, you can see a Scottish lion. Yes. And King William the Lion was the first person who really used that instead of the old the old board of the pictures Kingdom of Scotland. And what's interesting there is that this window was gifted by the city to yes. the cathedral. So yes. again, trying in some way, not unlike the, the murals within the city chamber, mm -hmm. to reflect the city's history. Very much so. Very much so. So that, that, that's the, the beginning of the creation of the borough of Glasgow, you might say, as yes. well as the, the biblical creation that set out in Spears last year with Adam and Eve. And I understand they had to be touched a little bit because the dad is too explicit for the congregation. Wow. wow, right. So there are still some parts of their anatomy exposed, but others <laughs> clearly have been adjusted. Have been adjusted, Gordon, that's yes. right. Yes. For a more delicate age, yes. do you think? Yeah, yeah absolutely. No naked attraction no. there. No, <laughs> definitely not. No. <laughs> and Gordon, is it a unicorn on the left? It is. It is a unicorn, which of course is the Scottish royal yes. animal. Yes, yes. So we're yeah. picking up on those two themes on either side with the biblical creation narrative in the centre. Absolutely. And of course, round about the time, uh, when the bishop be became the incumbent here, he also got a grant of, of borough in the form of the barony of Glasgow. And I remember in 1975, uh, uh, celebrated 800 years of Glasgow as a borough, but it was also 800 years uh, since the bishop started work on refounding this cathedral. And his first work burned down, so to begin again towards the end of the 12th century. So it's really, a, it's an early 13th century building we have here, but it began just prior to that. Mm -hmm. no, lovely. And you know, you do have that sense in which you've got that ancestry, royal ancestry, and then you kind of sweep round to the north here, and again, a biblical allusion to ancestry. Absolutely. Because it's a more modern instrument. And you, you'll remember Bill Morris. Well, well yes. And this, this would have been a window in memory of Bill Morris. Yeah. Bill yeah. came in 67, I think. Yes. 1967. Yes. Um, and was here for many years. And then upon his retirement, they looked towards the song this week, and it's the tree of Jess, yes. yes, which during Advent we all remember Indeed. through the ancestry yes. of Jesus yes. and the household of David. So, Absolutely. from one monarch to another, in a yes. sense, yes. represented yes. within the windows. And it, it, it's quite a curious colour tone, but I understand that that is what historic Scotland wanted. Oh, I didn't realise that. I didn't know that. And, 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 and greys. And it's an interesting thing with the blues, isn't it? Because the blues and reds, historically, were the most expensive oh, colours. Absolutely. So there's always yes. that allusion to this richness yes. within these colours. Yes. Gordon, where will we go next? Well, now, um, let's move up, up the nave a little bit and we'll have a look at the Millennium Window on the left here. Yeah. Because that's our next contact with 
So we're really we're moving from the west towards the east, Gordon. But many, many people stop just here, looking north. They're looking towards the Royal Infirmary, looking towards Sight Hill, Springburn. But in order to look at it, you would have to look through this rather stunning window. So tell me a wee bit about this. Well, th this was commissioned um, in order to mark the millennium yes. um, by a local artist, John uh, Clark, that you mentioned. And it was unveiled by uh, Her Royal Highness Princess Royal, Princess Anne, to, to well, us. So another royal connection. Another royal connection, of which there are quite a, a few in here. Um, John, John Clark's interesting in that he also has windows in Café Gandolfi, if you fancy yes. a coffee. He's got them in the piping centre and he did some windows over in the synagogue. But my connection with John was with the installation of windows at St Mary's in Kirk and Tillock. The lino print artist Willie Roger designed the windows in memory of his parents and he created six days of creation, a Christmas window and an Easter window, and John installed them and with Willie. But what struck me here was, I spoke to John about this window, and I said, you know, stunning window, um, but it's really hard to read. Yes. And he said, well, is that not true of the gospel also? <laughs> and he's and right, that, because it's yes. about scattering the seed, and it's about, you know. Mm -hmm. One of the things that strikes me with this window is, when I look at some of the windows, I have a sense that there's maybe more of a, um, a progression or a naivety in some of the works that there are. However, in this window, that white globe in the left hand, it genuinely looks as though it's radiating light. Even on a, a dull day, it still looks as though the light's shining through. So, and again, the blues, the blues are shining through in such a beautiful way, but no, a, a lovely window. And the schools in Glasgow, you know, the high school, yes. the, the academy, Hutchie, they all made a contribution towards the installation mm -hmm. of the window as well. So no, another good, good window to look at when Absolutely. folks visit. And, Gordon. And in the, yeah. in the height of summer, when the sun is round on that side of the building, fleetingly in the morning and at night, you get to see that. It's funny, we didn't mention that about the, the large window in the west, but that in sunset in the oh, summer, yes, that's stunning. That's yes. yeah. And I've even been up very close to it mm -hmm. um, in the Triforium, yeah. and the light coming oh, through oh, yeah. radiant. Oh, and that, that would be brilliant. There's, there's a little spot at the top right there where you would have had access out to one of the towers that would have ah, been in the yes, west historically. Yes. And if you just sat a little seat there, you really think you're 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 ah, almost one terrific. step from heaven. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> so where well, will we head to now? Well, let's maybe just have a quick look at these two fairgrounds. Well, here we have one of the two fairgrounds, the name of Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mother, uh, to the church, uh, dedicated in in honour of the, of the Navy, which is the senior service in British military affairs, and to the Air Force, which is the youngest of them. I'm, I'm not sure the Queen was entirely appreciated how um, worship is conducted in Protestant churches when she donated these, but they look fine out here. And, uh, and I, I do try to use them, Gordon, I definitely do. Um, and we do have a sort of core of even song yes, um, yes. in regular times. But I think one of the stories that gets me is this this little ladybird. Oh, yes. Now, there's an interesting uh, thing. Yes, if we, if we come it. around here, there's actually a little ladybird. Oh, I see you it see in the in corner, there? yes. Yeah, now, now that's, that goes back to a story. Now, I'll not be as good at telling this story as one of our guides would be. But it's got to do with a ladybird landing on a map during a time when there were convoys going across oh, the Atlantic. Yes. And one of the folks in the map room was ready to swipe the ladybird off the map. And a colleague said, oh, don't do that, we're bad luck. So they left the ladybird on the map and the convoy managed to travel safely and successfully. And therefore they have honored the ladybird by secreting it away in a prayer desk within Glasgow Cathedral. What a wonderful story, isn't it? It's always good for the children. Yes. When the children come, it's always good fun. Yes, I, th I think that is absolutely fascinating. Now, this this portrait here, or this picture here... Yes. Is it, is it, is it Milan? I think, in, in the, I think it's either in the Brera Gallery in Milan or in Milan Cathedral? It's in what, yes, because we had a family 
who were visiting from Milan, and they walked in and said, we know this picture. And I said, how do you know? And it was either, as you say, the cathedral or the gallery. Um, but clearly we have a copy. And again, unusual for a Presbyterian Ooh, church to have, yes. you know, these kind of um, pieces of furniture and iconography. But again, I think this clearly is the people's cathedral. Yes. It's not and yes. it's one denomination and, and as such. And I, I always meant to ask Bill Morris about it, but no. I never did. No, I know, I know. So it's, it's an intriguing image to have again within a reformed church. But again, yes. what we recognise is that most denominations find themselves here at some point for an Absolutely. ecumenical service or whatever. So I hope that this represents the broad sweep of Christian mm -hmm. faith in Glasgow um, rather than just one. So. Yes, and it's a very seasonal topic. Yes, very much so, very much. That's right, exactly. Reflecting the trees. God, where will we go to now? Let's go downstairs. Let's go downstairs. So, Gordon, I always like coming here, and I'm here for your namesake, but unfortunately no relation, I don't and think. No, sadly no. not. I'd have been very thrilled if George Wiley had been uh, any kind. I suppose, given it's an unusual enough name, yes. there will be some distant connection. Well, you can claim it as your own. <laughs> it's your church, so you can claim it as your own. So, the entry is George Wiley, the artist, so famous for things like the, the straw train yes. to indicate Glasgow's past industrial heritage where the train was suspended, a full-size train suspended from the Finnis and Crane. Well, it was then a wonderful sight. Stunning, wasn't well. it? Because I remember the bits of straw floating away. Yes, I do yes, yes. yes. And then he also has done that Tempest Future at the time, passes the legs at Buchanan Street bus station. Oh, He's done those. Oh, the leg. I didn't realise yes, he had done he did that. Those, with the clock yes. on the top, so he did oh, those. Interesting. But we're very fortunate to have a little bit of Wiley here. Yes, and I do love that ship. Super. One of the oh. symbols of St Nicholas, Nicholas, of course. We're, yes. And we're in the St Nicholas Chapel. Indeed. And the other thing is, Gordon, if we look up to our right here, we have another ship yes. in the wall here. Yes. But I think with our royal connections, we could go back to 1969. Indeed we could. When the Queen came here with Prince Philip for the rededication of this chapel, as a place for the Sunday school That's to it. meet. Yes, lovely, absolutely which is, lovely. Which is great. And it does show the continuing interest, particularly of the recent members of the royal family, yes. in what goes on in this church. Yes, I think you're right. And I, and I also think that there is a real sense in which the church has taken its responsibility to kind of be the custodian of some beautiful things in terms of the artistry and the creative arts. And, and I think things like this table, you know, they, they give a place for really quite significant things to be that will not be moved. Yes. Um, I'm not sure who did the table cover. I'm, I would venture to ask Ned Malcolm. Well, here we commemorate uh, one of Scotland's fighting bishops. Uh, and nothing could be truer uh, than to say that uh, about Bishop Robert Wishart. Um, who had fallen out on several significant occasions with King Edward II and in fact been imprisoned by him uh, on a number of occasions. But it didn't start out like that. And on one of Edward's first visits to Glasgow, uh, he voted 12 oak trees to the church in order to repair the roof of the cathedral. But um, the bishop, who had uh, quite close connections to uh, Robert de Bruce, gave them to him so he could go to Kirkintilloch with it right. and reduce a castle belonging to the Colin, Colin family. family. Yes. Oh, that's right, in Peel Park in Kirkintilloch. And the castle keep is still there today. Oh, that's yeah. super. Yeah. So we could go and go and we see could. it. <laughs> yes. could. That's a day trip. A day that's trip. a day trip. That sounds like a good idea, Mark, <laughs> yeah. I have to say. But uh, Bishop Bishop was a, a real force to be reckoned with in, in, in Scottish history. And he only got out uh, of imprisonment after the Battle of Bannockburn. Ah, right. I, I find it interesting. We do have people um, who have a particular political inclination mm -hmm. who come annually um, on the anniversary of uh, Bishop Wishart and they, mm -hmm. they come to the tomb here and they generally maybe say a poem and offer a few words and sometimes I think I've even seen them have a dram as they stand in this ancient <laughs> building. And one year someone um, 
managed to, to, to bring out a set of bagpipes, which you can imagine in this rather tight area was oh. rather loud, but he, he played them for a little time and then was kind enough not to keep playing them. My, my concession here with Bishop Wishart, Gordon, is that if you look at the, the foot of the tomb, there are some colours, some flags. Oh, now, nice traditionally, nice. the Queen, now the King's colour, should always be flown on the left. Um, but you will notice that the king's colour is actually flying on the right. And that was a little concession to the fact that I didn't think it was fair for Bishop Wishart to lie <laughs> looking eternally at the Union flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. that, that is very good. And of course, the, the very significant difference between Sinister and Dexter and <laughs> they appear. Very good, yes. very good. Very yeah. good. So, well, so we're a real place that. of pilgrimage, yes. Yes, yes it, it is, it for is many. a place of pilgrimage. Yeah. And uh, indeed, Bishop Worship was one of those who helped to promote Glasgow as a place of pilgrimage. Is that right? Now, Gordon, we've opened this way, and I'm glad we did, because if you are reading one of the Pat Macintosh novels, a couple of them start with a severed head found in this well, <laughs> no less. So tell me, Gordon, what, what would folks call this? Well, it has been called a variety of things over the years, like the Holy Well of Glasgow, St Mungo's Well, and of course, as uh, you said just a minute ago, there's a Lady Well at the bottom yes. of the hill, yes. which has been used for brewing purposes for yeah. many centuries. And it is possible that the idea of this well goes right back to Celtic times, because wells were very significant in the way in which the Celts saw the universe um, and by, by putting things into water they, well, they both consecrated them and deconsecrated them uh, and that's how you find all sorts of fascinating Bronze Age sub things that have been thrown into bogs, particularly in Ireland but also here. Right. So I do feel this is a very ancient survival and it's interesting that it has been incorporated within the building of the cathedral, even in this extension to the main, the main building. Yeah. I think I, it's fascinating, you know, because we we know the Lady Well. But again, I think because of the different traditions, it's known more as the Lady Well as the Lady Chapel is, rather than yes. Mary's Well yes. and Mary's Chapel, yes. which would be the proper nomenclature. I think it would. But it's mean. interesting how you know with the Reformation and the the kind of you know, the difficulty with Mariology and what, what Presbyterianism thought that was, yes. maybe more than it actually was, yes, we ended exactly. up with the Lady This and the Lady That, rather than Mary's Well yes. and Mary's, you yes. know, um, well here as well. So it's, it's, it's a fascinating space, but it figures considerably in some of the Pat McIntosh books. Yeah. Which are very well researched. I, I, yes. I love Pat McIntosh. That, that's, that, that, that's a plug for Pat McIntosh, who's come and done talks for us at the symposium. Yes, I think, well, you know, and, and again, it would be something I don't know, you know, if she would think about doing it again, but it would I be something so. I really would be keen to do because, mm -hmm. you know, we have other Glasgow authors and I think she researches and does so well oh, setting that medieval sort of city that is Glasgow yes. in context. Yes. and you can and, imagine it. Oh, you get the flavour and the, you can almost um, smell the individuals as you walk past them in the street when you read some of her yes. writings. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And then here we can see some of the remains that some of these individuals will have worked on, yeah. like the sculptors, for instance, because these ancient stones here probably date back to the time of the previous building here. That's some of them do. So almost maybe found as debris yes. in and around the building. Absolutely. I think the one that strikes me, Gordon, is one that's right behind you at the moment on the top shelf with the bright colours. Oh, yes. Because indeed. that's often, you know, that's. Often an illusion is that you know many of the walls here may have been painted mm -hmm. in bright colours, mm -hmm. and you know you only need to get to the Sistine Chapel and see how they managed to create the effect of like drapes or yes. scenery and windows and uh, coaches absolutely. and doors through artistry. And I do wonder, you know, did we have any such friezes on the walls within this building? I really don't. I, I don't know, but I, it wouldn't surprise me at all because some of the little heraldic escutcheons yes. in the uh, 
the vaults here. They may have been picked up. Uh, well, do you know, it's funny you say that because I remember um, when I used to come here in the 90s, the early 90s, and we just lived in Denison, and I used to sit on the, it would have been the south aisle, mm -hmm. and I remember looking up at the ceiling, feeling as though it was a work in progress. I thought some of the plaster had come off. Ah, but I then nice. look at them now and I realise that, no, no, these are heraldic signs yes. um, and symbols that are actually carved into the, the very yes. kind of plaster of the ceiling. So, yes. no, it's very interesting. And, and, and it's, have been miraculously preserved. Oh, I think of yeah. all the changes that have happened in this building. It would be one of the comments, though, that um, people do find it quite dark when they come yes. in. I'm, I'm not as uncomfortable with that as some might be. Mm -hmm. I know that Prince Philip, when he used to come, mm -hmm. would often say to any of the elders on duty, when are you going to get this place clean? <laughs> and I think one of the elders on one particular occasion said, well, I think you should check with the Scottish ministers because the building is in the care of the Crown. So <laughs> the cleaning um, won't be our direction or expense. So, yeah. But I take it this is just the tallow from the candles that would have been and the, the industry of the city. The industry of the city will, yeah. will have penetrated over the centuries when we had a lot of smoke yeah. in Glasgow. And I imagine that in the early days, it might have been whitewashed. Interesting, yes. Because a lot of big churches yeah. were... And you know, Gordon, we should maybe walk up to the most whitewashed space in the building, now that you've mentioned that, because yes. that's a lovely kind of connection. It um, is. And you see... The change in difference it can make to a room. Yes. So, Gordon, tell me, you know, I kind of get to know some things about the place, and many times that's tied to the very fabric of the building, but you maybe know bits and pieces about Blackadder. A little bit. Historically, politically, mm -hmm. and because he seems to have a bit of a shaker and mover. Oh, I, I think he was. He was employed by the king as a diplomat. He travelled all over Europe. I think he maybe even got to the Holy Land. Uh, I don't remember for sure. No, but, uh, but, but he certainly got around. And of course, he was on his, his way to yes. Jerusalem on a pilgrimage when he died yes. in uh, en route, having made his will in Venice. Um, and, and he made that in the presence of some significant people. Yes, the, the, the witnesses to the will included the doji and two of the councillors of state, uh, which show what a significant person in international terms yes. Yes. he was. Not least, of course, because he was the man responsible for elevating the see of Glasgow to an archbishopric. Yes. Yes. Which he managed to do about 10 or 20 years before he died. So is he's the first Archbishop of he Glasgow? He is the first Archbishop of Glasgow. Yeah, that's quite remarkable, isn't it? It really? is. And, and I, I think what strikes me as well is that with these, these passing, the passing of office, often they want to leave their mark yes. on a place. And we call this the Black Adder mm. Isle yes. because it, it's, you know, constructed or under construction Stratton. during his yes. reign, if yes. you like. But I think it actually had, had more of a reference to, to Mungo's um, yes. patron, if you like. To St Fergus. St Fergus. Absolutely. So I think the actual name is the Fergus, Fergus Isle, Isle. Isle. but yes. we don't call it that. Yes. No, we, we associate it with, with, the, with Archbishop Robert, um, but it's a very handsome addition to the church. And it was never intended simply to be a single story. It was intended to be two stories and, and entered from the main level. I see. But that, that, that never happened. And Archbishop Blackadder has, has a, uh, he's left a lasting legacy to us because he was responsible in 1503 for marrying King James IV ah, yes, yes. to Princess Margaret Tudor, the uh, sister of King Henry VIII. I won't say anything about the Henry's memory. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, politically, you know, diplomatically interwoven in the very fabric of the history of the nation. Oh, definitely so. Yeah. Definitely so. Because, of course, it was um, her was it grandson, King James VI, who inherited eventually from Queen Elizabeth the throne of England. And, it, and it's interesting with the Fergus reference as well, mm. because one of the motifs in the boss here is actually an image of a corpse on a ah, hearse. And if you actually just look up there, you can see it there. 
just the corpse oh, yes. of the hearse. Yes, and, yes. and that's allegedly yes. Fergus, Fergus on his, on his hearse. Yes. So Mungo came to Gairn, mm. sets out with these two white bull yes. pulling the, the hearse. Mm -hmm. And in a sense says, wherever this stops, I'll establish my community. Mm -hmm. Now it just so happens to stop where St Ninian has already consecrated some ground for burial exactly. and this is the very spot mm -hmm. and therefore came together through the depositing mm -hmm. of Fergus establishes his community yes. here. So a lot of um, beginnings and origins and you know allusions. Coming here Gordon we come to a couple of seats that are discreetly placed they're not, um, you know, they're not in full view of the whole congregation, and they were for someone particularly special. Absolutely, uh, these two chairs, in the heart of the, the important part of the church, liturgically speaking, yes. and historically speaking, yes. the East End, are the two chairs reserved for the monarch and his or her concert. And this one here, as you can see on the back, has the initials of a late sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth II, uh, with the Scottish arms in the appropriate quarters, yes. as you'll see, uh, and her royal initials and, uh, on there. And at the end of, the, of the, the little enclosure where we are, we have the Scottish national animal um, mm -hmm. bearing the uh, golden lion of, of, of Scotland. And this is where, uh, when the late Queen and Prince Philip used to come here, they would sit. Uh, and hopefully King Charles and Queen Camilla will yes. be doing that sometime in the not too distant future. And of course this is a, a, an area very much redolent with royalty because the great east window behind us here uh, features uh, the arms of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, with the uh, canting arms of the bows and the lions in it and the, the arms of Prince Philip as a, as a prince of uh, Greece and Denmark, and the royal arms of Scotland, and the arms of the United Kingdom, and the symbols of the four great evangelists. Yes. St. Mark, whom we've been talking about in the Venetian connection, the winged lion, uh, the winged ox for St. Yes. Luke, yes. Uh, the winged man or, or the angel for St. Matthew, and the... Um, Eagle for St. John. Yes, yes. And of course we have here a wonderful example of an eagle in the form of this brass lectern um, where the lessons are read from in the morning. Yeah, and it was given, I believe, by the Maxwell family. Oh, really? Yes, and yeah. they've got, there's an M motif in the, the chest oh. of the eagle. What I think is beautiful about this is that it's 17th century and it's French. Oh. Yes, apparently. And I think there's two things about it. When we've been doing the live streaming of the services, people have commented on the feathers and on the, the beak, the bill of this particular, because you can see it's so sharp and pronounced. And it really is a lovely piece of furniture. But again, it's the eagle because it ties in with John's lection. Yes. So when John's lection becomes the leading lection in the church, what better motif to let folks know that's what you're reading from than an eagle lectern? Absolutely. But it's a beautiful piece. Isn't it? Very, very handsome. Oh, gorgeous. As are many of the things that we're lucky to have preserved here. Oh, you're can, right. And yeah. that we can come and see um, either uh, during a service or when it's opened by historic school. Yes, no, you're right. And it's open all year round and mm -hmm. folks are made very welcome. Again, Gordon, I think one of the privileges today was to welcome you at the Great West Door and then through our perambulations to arrive at the east end of the cathedral. And in a sense, that's a journey I make most days. And on a Sunday, at least on a Sunday, I find myself arriving at this pulpit. And that's where I count it really quite a privilege mm -hmm. and an honour to be the minister here. Because this very pulpit, it tells us, this pulpit <coughs> used in this cathedral since 1596, and it tells us here it was restored by an ex-deacon convener of the trades of Glasgow, and it marked the first decade of the ministry of the Reverend Pearson McAdam Muir. 
it's a privilege to be minister here. It's lovely to come with folks like yourself who know a lot about the space and the building and have probably seen it as their own home for many years to come back and to be part of that. So Gordon, it's a beautiful place to be. It's been lovely to spend some time with you today. And maybe we, we end where it starts, for in the beginning was the word. Absolutely. It's been a, truly a pleasure as well as a privilege to come, Mark. Thanks, Thank you Gordon. very much for spending time. Thank you, Gordon.